place, we use that as sort of a framework upon which to base those goals. So I want to tell you a little bit about the strategic plan. Uh, you, you'll see it in detail tomorrow, but I wanted to give you just a little bit of a summary right now. It is the culmination of 12 hours of collaborative effort by a group of 27 individuals that represent a cross-section of <clears throat> school and community groups, including teachers, administrators, board members, home and school members, students, representatives from groups like Grace, uh, the Education Foundation, uh, the GRDIA, and others. And the strategic plan was facilitated by a man named Richard Panacucci, who has a company that does this work called the Madison Institute, sometimes known as TMI. Um, the process of creating it was intensive, and it included small group discussion sessions around specific focus areas that included safety and wellness, teaching and learning, leadership and governance, community, community and culture, and finance. And as in this 12-hour effort, which was broken up into several sessions, um, we had extensive discussions. We did some data mining through available data on the district, gap analysis where that data fell short, and also a lot of discussion and consensus building. So um, the administration and the board members have reviewed the plan, but it's important to know that it is not the Board of Education's plan. It is not the administration's plan. It is an expression of community values and priorities that will guide us as we put together goals and action items for this school year and also in the succeeding four years. It's a five-year plan. But like all plans, you know, we, we all make plans and sometimes we those plans happen just as we imagine them, and sometimes they don't. Um, circumstances may require that we modify uh, certain aspects of those plans. But overall, the strategic plan is meant to be adaptive, adaptable, and dynamic. Um, so we expect not to put it on the shelf to gather dust, but to use it as a regular guide and reference for our work going forward. So I want to um, just summarize the uh, mission statement that we came up with, as well as the goals themselves. Uh, and as I said, you'll see the whole thing in detail. So um, anything that uh, you don't hear here, you can check with tomorrow. So the mission statement is every student inspired, engaged, and supported. Now that sounds very short, and you've probably all s seen um, mission statements that were longer, that had many more commas that might even have had semicolons. But one of the uh, particular focuses of the um, facilitator, Rich, was to get it, to cook, cook it down to its essence. So every student inspired, engaged, and supported. And then let me go to the, the goals. Um, so as the result of the gap analysis and looking at data, we've identified the following as priority long-range goals. So the first one is, raise awareness for and improve access to academic policies and procedures, including those related to academic integrity. <clears throat> Two, promote global awareness through the connections between academics and the real world. Three, improve the communications patterns and processes universally, including as they pertain to special education. Four, establish the steps that children and adults can take to improve their connection with available counseling professionals and other student support staff. And five, provide improved access and transparency to parents and students regarding the district's curricula and activities in the area of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And you'll see when you look at the strategic plan that there are some five-year milestones. Right now we're focused on the first year because that's probably the most uh, clear and definable, but there are five-year milestones. So with that, uh, board members, let's open it up to discussion of both these themes and the themes that emerged at our last meeting in our um, board self-evaluation with the uh, goal, <laughs> the goal with goals, to come up with both board and district goals. And what we hope to do tonight and I apologize, David, for not looking at you. You're way down on the other end. What we hope to do tonight is to generate ideas which will um, 
board members will then send me their suggestions for possible goals. And I will collate them, circulate them to the board, and at our next meeting, we'll actually hash out the goals based on um, that collated document. So board members, in terms of what you've heard tonight and the themes that emerged from board self eval communications, uh, better committee reporting, um, uh, more information on curriculum. Do you have any ideas, uh, do you have any questions or comments on the strategic plan, first of all? Um, I think I'd like to look a little deeper into those before really commenting because it leaves a lot to um, the, the imagination. Okay. So um, I don't really have much to, you know, based on those topics, they sound, they sound good, but um, I think it'd be, it, it bears us really taking a deep dive okay. individually as a board. Other uh, comments from board members? Yeah, do well. I just wanted to, like, I, I'm just remembering we did have a, you know, quite a healthy discussion around the um, strategic plan during our board retreat. And I'm reminded looking at our goals and you discussing our goals, there are a few things that I highlighted mm -hmm. that I just wanted to. Um, share that Please. I thought were particularly important. Please. Um, in fact, I think they're all important, but I do think we need to prioritize. And the, the two that I really wanted to flag were the, um, was the idea of promoting global awareness through the connections between the academics and the real world. And a lot of this is what I hear from my children. Like, how does this relate to what we're doing? Well, what I'm going to do? You know, why do I really need to study X to become a veterinarian or whatever it is. Um, so I think that's very important. Um, and I also, my other note was about um, establishing the steps that children and adults can take to improve their connection um, with available counseling professionals and other student support staff. And I just think we can really uh, work on that a lot as far as making sure all of our students are supported which actually both of these things go right back to our mission statement. That's just a few of my comments. I don't know how much more we want to, to go into all of this tonight, but. Um, well, as thoughts? Anthony says, within, and you'll see this tomorrow when you see the strategic plan, there are statements of values. There's a lot of um, back, what I would call uh, buttressing to these goals. And, um, and that does take some some consideration, even though the board saw the strategic plan in July and then um, saw it again, we recirculated it just because July seems like a long time ago. Um, it, it does take a bit of contemplation. Any other uh, questions or comments? I just want to make sure that we thank properly, I know you already have, but thank all the, the 27 people who put in so much time Absolutely. to this discussion you know, during our board retreat. We only had a few hours to kind of dive into it and we only brushed the surface of it. And the fact that you know, so many people from such a cross section of Glenridge residents were able to dedicate a lot of time into pinpointing these goals when we really have so much that we can and should be working on, it's, I think it's a commendable feat and I just wanted to say thank you. Absolutely, and you know, each section, each session of these multiple uh, discussion sessions that went into the strategic plan happened at the end of a working day for everybody. So you had a bunch of tired, stressed, busy, post-COVID people who all agreed to come together to try to put together a strategic plan. So um, thank you so much, Kristen, and thank you to those in the audience who contributed. Uh, thank you in advance to those who send us their thoughts. Thank you in advance to the board who will send me their thoughts so I can collate them. And we will move forward with this uh, in our district planning. Any other thoughts or comments? Okay, uh, thank you. Um, superintendent's report. 
Thank you. Um, my report's probably a little bit shorter than usual uh, because our last meeting was less than two weeks ago. Um, I first would like to congratulate our Arlene Zalewski also. She started working um, for the district in 2003. Uh, her first uh, position was at Ridgewood Avenue School, and I, I got some. T uh, I was able to work with her when I was principal at the building, and then she moved over to the high school and. When I came back, I got to work with her again, so it was, it was nice. Uh, she is uh, such a sweet, kind, and compassionate individual, um, and she's great with the students because she, uh, she's very patient. Uh, I, so I want to wish her the best and, and um, tell her to enjoy this her last year um, as an employee and as a member of the uh, Glenridge School community. Uh, some people might be wondering, well, well n new face sitting over there. Uh, I want to welcome our student representative, Colin Pennington. He was elected to this as uh, the student council pre uh, president, and now he's been appointed uh, to serve as the Board of Education student representative. Uh, th this is a new mandate by the state. Um, he, uh, Colin will be a non-voting member. He'll give feedback on proposals from a student's perspective. Uh, he'll provide updates on what is happening at the high school, and this is going to be a two-way street. He'll be going back to his uh, classmates and, and, and explaining what is happening at, at the Board of Ed level. I just want to also mention that Colin served on the Strategic Planning Committee, so he's very involved uh, not only in school but on a, a larger level of the district, what's happening in the district. Um. And, and I do have a nameplate. Uh, it's, it's on order. It'll be here for the next meeting. <laughs> um, uh, tonight, there's an addendum that includes the district emergency closure plans for uh, remote and virtual instruction. Don't worry. We're not moving in that direction. Um, but it is a new requirement from the Department of Education that every district must submit um, uh, emergency closure plan. Our plan mirrors what we have d done in the past. Um, it will go into effect only if the district is closed for three consecutive days uh, due to the declared state of emergency or public health emergency. I'm hoping that uh, we, we create this and we put this on the shelf and never see it again. We are now in our third week of the school. We're off to a, a, a good start. Uh, Ridgewood Avenue and Glenridge High School had their back to school nights. Uh, the athletic season has started up at the high school and the marching band had their first performance this past weekend. So we're, we're looking to, uh, forward to everything that's happening in the, the buildings. Um, last week we did have an incident at the high school where a student made a threatening comment. This was immediately handled, uh, and I want to thank the Glenridge uh, Police Department for their cooperation and support as we looked into the matter and evaluated the situation. Uh, we will continue to work through some related issues among the students that were involved in this incident. Um, and I want to share some upcoming district events because, as I mentioned, things are starting to get back to normal where we're having a lot of events that occur. Um, the, the Start Strong assessment will begin at the high school this week, and I know Ridgewood Avenue already completed that testing. Uh, the fifth and sixth grade parent and student presentation is uh, on Wednesday night. The Chinese Honor Society inductions are this Thursday. The primary schools will be holding their back to school nights on Thursday. Uh, next Monday, schools are closed. Um, on the 30th, Ridgewood Avenue School will be having their casino night and several big, larger events that are happening. Um, October 12th, we're having a parent presentation, Raising Resilient Teens. October 18th, we will have a harassment, intimidation, bullying presentation for the parents. And October 23rd uh, is the kitchen tour, so make sure you get your tickets while you're at the various school events. And that's it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we've now arrived at the first public comment period for comments on um, agenda items only. Uh, for some of you who have not been here before or perhaps haven't been here in a long time, we have a procedure. Um, you step up to the lectern right there and sign in. Uh, once you've done that, state your name clearly and confirm your Glenridge residency and also any group affiliation that you might have. Uh, each individual has two minutes to speak and my colleague Kristen will be timing that. If you run out of time, uh, during the first public comment period or have something additional to say, we have a second public comment period at the end of the meeting. Uh, if you have a um, prepared statement, uh, please, when you're finished, uh, hand it to uh, Mrs. Murphy so that it can become part of the record. Uh, if you have multiple questions or comments, 
please state them all at once and we'll try to answer them in the order in which they were submitted. Uh, and other than that, the, those are the guidelines. So are there any uh, public comments? We know you already. <laughs> I feel like I should introduce myself anyway. Um, I'm Heather Yaros Ramos, resident of Glen Ridge. Um, over the past several years, we've worked with the district to devise an appropriate education plan for our child. To avoid any appearances of a potential conflict, it now becomes necessary for me to resign from the BOE in order to seek an appropriate education for my daughter. I thank my fellow board members who waited to accept my resignation in the hopes that my recusal would suffice. Unfortunately, New Jersey state law requires that I step down from my position. However, I have every reason to believe this matter will be resolved well before the next BOE session in January, and therefore I am not withdrawing as a candidate, and I am still running for re-election in November. I, am, feel op I feel optimistic about the direction we were heading as a board, and for that reason, I'd like to continue, and that's why I'm continuing to run. That's all. Thanks, Heather. Okay, other comments? I thought the whole audience would leap up at once. I see that that's not happening. Please, uh, if you have a question or comment. Yes, please. Uh, hi, Phil Johnson, 55 Chestnut Hill Place. Um, I guess affiliation, I'm currently the first vice chair of the CCC in town. Um, I guess, you know, you referenced the negotiations with the teachers union that is ongoing. Um, I wanted to understand better, I know there's a lot of teachers that have recently departed the um, school for other opportunities. Have you surveyed the, the departing teachers to understand the reasons for their departure? Is it financial or are there other mitigating circumstances? Okay. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, I, there, there's a variety of reasons depending on the individuals. Uh, some have left uh, to go to districts which have a higher um, salary guide. Others have uh, found positions closer to their home, uh, especially when uh, their situation at home involves small, uh, younger children, so they want to be closer and, and cut down the com uh, commute. So, um, uh, so it's typically it, those two reasons are the reasons why someone would resign to go to another district. Okay, and I, I know you know both township residents, whether you are, have kids in the school or not, we val highly value the value of a Glen Ridge education and, this, and the, the school district highly, but our district is only also only as good as the teachers that are living in, this, in these schools and teaching our kids. And so I know across all um, employment, um, all, all types of work, there's a lot of um, fluidity in terms of uh, people moving from position to position. And, Certainly, I would encourage ways to find to compensate our, our teachers in an appropriate manner to make sure that we are retaining such a, they're such a key asset to the development of our, of our kids and the value of our communities. So thank you. Thanks. There is there. I think there is no one on this board or even <clears throat> in this room who would disagree with anything that you just said. So thank you. Other questions or comments? Hello, my name is Matt Canisi. I'm an English teacher at the high school and co-lead negotiator for the Glen Ridge Education Association. In May, my team arrived at an evening negotiation session only to be immediately told by the board attorney, not a member of the board, but the board attorney, that the Glen Ridge Board of Education did not see a point in continuing to negotiate with us and were declaring an impasse that would trigger state mediation. Uh, I missed an evening with my young children, my two sons, to learn the board wasn't, was willing to walk away from the table before the contract had even expired, something I didn't even know was possible. Uh, this past week, my team entered the first state mediation session with the goal of settling this contract as soon as possible and sparing our members a moment like this. Um, while we waited for a counter from the board, I began to see members walk past my doorway to exit the building. They did not even tell the state mediator they were leaving. 
In the middle of the first of only two state mediation sessions, the board's team just left the building while the GREA and the mediator waited for their response. I can promise you, I promise you, whatever negative reaction you've had to any of our proposals, we have felt the same towards you and your proposals. But we are here now. I'm standing here now. We're not walking away. We're looking at you. We're talking to you because no matter what happens to this negotiation table from this point forward, this process ends with our signatures on the same page in the same ink as yours of a successor agreement. It seems you've forgotten that simple fact. Your actions belie your stated principles and leave our members feeling unheard, unappreciated, and worse. The second mediation session is on October 12th. My team will be in the same room that many of you walked past at the first session. On your way into the building, look at us this time. Say hello, I'll greet you right back. Do anything you need to do to remind yourself you're negotiating with a group of people who are your partners in making this district the success that it is. Tonight is a reminder that we deserve your attention and your respect as equals in this process. Please, never forget that again. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. can clarify for a moment because certainly those allegations are serious. Um, we did not regard declaring an impasse and going to mediation as walking away. We regard it as using another method of finding a way to come together. Because as Matt said, at the end of the day, we will have a contract with all of our signatures on it. We were under the impression when we left the building that uh, the teachers had been told that we were finished for the evening. If there was a miscommunication and it was our fault, I certainly apologize for that. It's not intended. Many of you know, um, especially those of you who've worked for us for a long time, uh, how dear to my heart teachers are. And so if there was an offense, it was not a deliberate offense. We have every intention of coming in on October 12th with the idea that we will walk out with uh, a settlement. So uh, again, if there was offense, I apologize. It was not intentional. We value not just the intellectual capacity of our teachers, which is formidable, but their humanity. So it was not our intention to create a situation where you all felt undervalued or to negate that humanity or to undermine you in any way. So we will go forward from here. We will work hard if we cause offense not to cause offense again. And I think we come, we will all come on the 12th with optimism that we can settle this contract. Any other questions or comments? Good evening. I'm Costas Barcouris, science teacher here at Glenridge High School and co-chair of the team negotiating for the Glenridge Education Association. I'm here to speak about employee compensation at Glenridge. Since the financial crisis, teacher salaries have essentially been frozen. Teacher salaries at Glenridge are currently 6% above where they were in 2010, over 12 years ago. While over the same time period, the cost of living has increased over, well over 30%. The pay scale for teachers and advisors is exactly the same as it was 12 years ago. We ask, in what other profession besides education would this lack of compensation be acceptable? In those 12 years, our responsibilities have only grown. During the pandemic, we became first year teachers all over again. We literally had to recreate the way we teach. As the pandemic progressed, the board, building administrators and staff worked together to make Glenridge the envy of surrounding districts. This is because Glenridge is known for its educational leadership. Ask any realtor what they think of Glenridge, and the first thing they say is exceptional schools. This year, US News and World Report ranked Glenridge High School number 12 in New Jersey. The 11 other schools were all admissions only schools. The county average is often quoted as the limits of compensation, as if Glenridge is some average school district. Glenridge is exceptional. 
yet our salaries do not reflect this. We pride ourselves on providing the highest standard of education. Now we're asking that our compensation honor that standard. Thank you. Thanks, Kassi. I am Mary Lynn Savio. I have taught in this district for 24 years and have been the union president for the past four. Having witnessed eight negotiations during that time, I can say that it is the norm for our board to allow our contract to expire for negotiations to become protracted. And as a result, every three years, we start the school year feeling unheard, unsettled, and underappreciated. Yet we always do right by our students and put 100% into our classrooms because we are caring and dedicated professionals. Back in 2010, Due to a bad economy, our union agreed to accept a zero increase. Times were tough and we did our part. The problem is that even when the district receives unprecedented state aid, as they did this year, and unbudgeted savings are realized due to the loss of top of guide staff and a switch to a lower cost healthcare program, as occurred this year, all, they do not still see fit to even consider offering a modest increase above average and to communicate to our staff that their dedication and hard work is seen and valued. It is standard for this board to offer settlements well below the county and state averages, yet they never hesitate to tout how above average the Glenridge School Districts are and what a high quality education we provide as evidenced by the student achievement and rankings. By no choice of our own, we once again find ourselves in mediation. Even though the board pushed to get us there, they once again chose not to offer a counterproposal and so failed to keep the process moving forward. Apparently there was some kind of miscommunication, but the mediator did not know that you had left, and that is what he communicated to us. So hopefully next time around, that will be avoided. The bottom line is that it does not feel like the board is giving us or this process a fair chance. Rushing to declare an impasse and refusing to discuss contract language or exchange counterproposals is clear evidence of this. At this point, we are exhausted by this unproductive process, demoralized by the continual lack of respect, and we look forward to a time when we can report back to our members that we have some good news, hopefully that they are worthy of more than a below average settlement and that they can feel good about continuing to work hard and give their all to this district and their students. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I can assure you there is no lack of respect and there is a great desire to get a deal done. Um, for the information of, of people here, in our last um, session with the mediator, which was also our first session with the mediator, the mediator was virtual and our two sides were um, in person in different rooms. It's a different scenario than we've had before. I think perhaps the obvious miscommunication, for which I again apologize, was partly um, as the result of that. Uh, so we go forward from here. But thank you to all of our teachers who are here. Uh, you brought us through this pandemic. We will get through this negotiation. Um, but never think that there is a lack of respect from anybody on this board, from anybody in the administration, and certainly not from anybody in the town. Any other questions or comments? Hey, uh, Ryan Doyle, resident. I'm also a, a new member of the CCC, so um, I didn't endorse anyone in this cycle, um, and I'm not speaking on their behalf right now. Uh, just procedural question for the election coming up. Um, if Ms. Yaros Ramos um, runs, she is running, excuse me, wins, but for some reason can't be seated in January, what's the process then? Well, um, you know, we will cross that bridge when we come to it, but we would, again, uh, have to make an appointment. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But on that score, as on many others, we are, we are optimistic, as Heather mentioned. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Okay. Uh, board members, you have, um, it is time for committee and liaison reports, but it isn't because it is not the first meeting of the month. Does anyone have anything from a committee or a liaison appointment that is timely? Colin wasn't here last week, uh, last meeting, so he may. Sorry. Colin wasn't here last meeting, so he may. You have a, a report or? Would you like to, oh, we hate to put you on the spot, but would you like to make your report? Colin, say, Colin, say there. We'll, we'll bring the mic to you this time. 
Schools reopened two weeks ago, and another productive year is already underway. As we transition into a post-COVID world, restrictions have been lifted and classroom environments are largely back to normal. Mask usage remains optional, and virtual instruction has been phased out, marking a return to the practices we were accustomed to from before the pandemic first hit. Our thanks go out to all the teachers, staff, and administrators who worked so hard to ensure that education was able to continue effectively during these difficult times, which seem to be coming to an end. The new school year also brings with it many traditional events and student activities. This past Friday was Ridger Day, where all high school students gathered at Harrell Field to celebrate school spirit and our fall sports teams. The marching band performed their routine, and the fall captains hosted sports themed games. This was the first event under Mr. Roth, the new student council advisor, and it signals the start of another successful year of Glenridge Pride. This Thursday, the high school club fair will be held. Students will have the opportunity to join our many clubs and organizations, which will be exhibited by officers in the media center. This is an important day each year as it facilitates the student involvement that is so crucial to our school community. Even though the year has only just begun, there has been a significant amount of activity already, and with so much more soon to come, we are all excited for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Board members, any questions for Colin? Okay, thank you for that, your, your maiden voyage on this particular <laughs> trip with this particular board. Uh, you're, you're in good company, Colin. The, um, the State Board of Ed has long had a permanent student rep who talks every year and sometimes sits through the four or five hour marathon meetings that the State Board of Ed has. We, we promise that that will not happen to you. Okay. <laughs> you have in your packets uh, minutes from the meeting of September 9th, exec in regular session. Does anyone have any uh, additions or corrections to those minutes? All right, Anthony, would you move the minutes? I'll move M1. May um, I have a second? Second from Kristen. Um, since there's no discussion, no addition, Barbara, would you call the roll? Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Abstain. Ms. Gottlieb? Aye. Ms. Graham? Aye. Ms. O'Neill? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Abstain. Ms. Ginsburg. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Um, David, would you move the administration items? I move A1 through A3. Okay. A3 being on the uh, addendum. Does anyone have any uh, discussion on the administrative items? Can we get a second? Oh, I'm sorry. May I have a second? Second. Second from Tracy. Thank you, Barbara. A discussion on any of the items, the new and revised policies, which are largely, as is often the case with policies, uh, uh, the result of new or revised state mandates. Any questions or comments? All right, Barbara, would you call the roll? Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Ms. Gottlieb? Aye. Ms. Graham? Aye. Ms. O'Neill? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Motion carries. Okay, personnel. Tracy, would you move the personnel items? Yes, I move P1 through P12, which includes an uh, addition on the addendum for P9. Okay, may I have a second? Second. Second from Jocelyn. In keeping with our rules, personnel items are discussed in exec session. Uh, board members, if you have no objections, we'll take a vote. Any reason not to? <coughs> Okay, Barbara. Mr. Bonnet. Aye. Mr. Campbell. Aye. Ms. Gottlieb. Aye. Ms. Graham. Aye. Ms. O'Neill. Aye. Ms. St. Auburn. Aye. Ms. Ginsburg. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, um, Duval, would you move the curriculum item? Sure, I'll move C1 enthusiastically, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> um, by any chance you going on that uh, trip? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Care. Okay, may I have a second? Second from Jocelyn. Any comment other than uh, Duval's enthusiasm on the curriculum item? All right, Barbara, would you call the roll? Mr. Bonnet. 
Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Ms. Gottlieb? Aye. Ms. Graham? Aye. Ms. O'Neill? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, David, would you move the business items? I move B1 through B7. All right, may I have a second? Yep, I'll second. Second from Duval. Any discussion on the business items? Discussion? All right, Barbara, would you uh, call the roll? Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Ms. Gottlieb? Aye. Ms. Graham? Aye. Ms. O'Neill? Aye. Ms. Ann Auburn? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, we've now come to the second public comment period for comment on agenda items or other items pertaining to the running of the schools. Uh, the same uh, protocols apply. So, does anyone have a public comment? excited and passionate. <laughs> Thank you, Mary Lynn. There's not a pen, but my name is Patrick Preblick. I live at 64 Adams Place, and this is just a quick note. Um, my daughter's a recent graduate, my youngest, and um, she texted me the first few weeks of college to say, I am so lucky to be here. And I am so lucky as a resident of Glen Ridge to have this amazing union of teachers that have supported my children through their 18 years here, as well as my fellow neighbors and board members who are working to come to a resolution. As a 24-year 24 mem member of a union myself, not the teacher's union, but the daughter of a retired teacher, a retired teacher mother-in-law, and a niece who's a public school teacher, I support all of you in your efforts to come to a fair and quick agreement. Three years is a long time to not have a contract. And I can appreciate that. And I am just a person to say I have great gratitude for the civil discourse we're holding here. And also great hope that Glenridge is going to continue to improve in every way, including the recommendations for diversity, equity, and inclusion that are going forward thanks to the audit and what we're learning about each other and how to get better. So just thank you teachers, thank you neighbors, thank you fellow board members, thank you board members for your service. And here's hoping we can all have a good year. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> Other public comment? And um, if you need a pen, I, do I think. I need a pen. Thank you. Um, forgive me if I stumble. I hadn't prepared anything. I wasn't planning on coming up here and speaking. Um, my name is Carol wilcox Fedick. I have been a teacher at Glen Ridge High School. Oh, I got one. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, I've been a teacher here for 12 years, but I wanted to share with the board something that I shared with all my parents at back to school night. My, par I, my parents, my own parents, moved to this town the day I was born. I have been involved in this district in some way, shape, or form longer than I'd like to admit. <laughs> um, however, when I went back to school for my history education degree, this was my dream job. There is nowhere else I wanted to work. I really don't want to work anywhere else. This is where I wanted to be. I'm a graduate from Glen Ridge High School. I'm a parent of two graduates from Glen Ridge High School. But when I hear my union reps t talking about how it does not seem like there is a negotiation in earnest going on, that yes, there must have been some miscommunication, but you walked past the room they were in without telling them you were leaving, without engaging in the process, is, is so demoralizing. I can't even tell you what it does to me. This is my home away from home. So I just respectfully ask you to please genuinely sit down and work with the union so that we can come to an agreement and we can all get back to the work that we love. Thank you. Thanks, Carol.
other questions or comments? Okay, if that is the case, uh, board members may have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Uh, moved by David, uh, 